Now let's move to uh, an area that's uh, more enjoyable to talk about, and that is restoration. Psalm 23, God refreshes and restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness and right standing with him for his namesake. God is a God that's all about restoration. We talk about saving grace, and that's wonderful, amazing grace. But there's not only saving grace for the sinner, but there's restorative grace for the saint who has fallen, been broken, and repentant. God wants to restore his children. And restoration is a desperately needed ministry in our churches. I've seen that happen in many ways. People want to be restored. They realize they have sinned. They have been broken, but no one has restored them. They've repented. I think of a pastor friend of mine, had a marvelous church going, had over a thousand people there in just a very short period of time, and he fell. He was not, he was not disciplined because nobody even went after him or cared about him. They just simply kicked him out of the church, not following Matthew 18, not going to him, but just dismissing him and, and telling him he was not welcome to come back, no plan, no explanation even to the congregation. He was just gone. That man wandered around in the wilderness and, and to this day, I've talked to him the last few months, he is not, I asked him, I said, do you feel restored? He said, I've been restored to the Lord. I've dealt with my sin, but I'm not restored to the body of Christ. I'm not restored to that body. I don't know who I am. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. And I've seen some attempts at restoration that have been half-hearted and they've never worked. And there's nothing worse than leaving a person unrestored. Now let's talk about restoration, what it is. The word restored is used in the Bible, the Greek word, for mending nets, for setting a bone, for making something useful again. That's the goal of restoration, to make it better than new. I've seen cars that somebody has made an attempt to restore that car, but they were an amateur, they didn't know what they were doing, it was a half-hearted attempt, and it was lousy. But I've seen some cars that people have took the time and the care and they knew what they were doing, and they restored that car and it was better than new. It was magnificent. And God is after that. God wants to take a person, and I've seen many people that have been, uh, that have fallen, that have been broken, and repented, and have been properly restored, they're more effective than ever. Why? Because they've been humbled, they've been broken, and they realize more and more their dependence upon God. And uh, it can be done right, it can be done wrong. I know how bones can be set. I've broken my leg, my right leg, three times. And I've thought about that. And I'm so glad there was an expert doctor each time that set that bone properly. But you know, people could have said, you broke your leg, that's your own fault, you did stupid things, you jumped off a roof, you did this, you're playing football and you shouldn't. They could have lectured me. They could have condemned me for being foolish and stupid and that's how I broke my leg and leave me in that condition. And that's what some people do to a fallen person. It's your own fault. You deserve it. You shouldn't have done that. And they just lecture them and leave them. Somebody could have just ignored me, said, well, you know, that's his problem. It's not my problem. Leave him with that broken leg. Some people could have said, that leg, he messed up that bad. Just amputate the leg and cut it off. But somebody restored it, put it back. And that bone is stronger than ever because it was properly set. 
So God is, God is committed to restoring the lives of the children, but he needs the cooperation of his body. Don't neglect the problem, don't jump on them, but restore them. I have another man, another illustration of what happens when restoration is neglected. This man did something very sinful, very foolish. He was caught in that sin, but what happened? Did anyone try to restore him? Did anybody go with him, uh, go to him in the spirit of Matthew 18, in the spirit of Galatians 6, 1 and 2? No. Again, he was banished from the fellowship with no plan, no desire to work with him. And uh, he was ostracized from the body that should have restored him. He became depressed. He became suicidal. His life was an absolute mess. And he thought that God was through with him and everybody else was through with him. And it was such a tragedy because he was left in limbo. He said, what more can I do? I've repented of my sin. I've asked God's forgiveness. I want to ask their forgiveness. They wouldn't even let him come back to the church to ask forgiveness. And he was left out there in this state of what I call a limbo. And there were people who think that he had not suffered enough. And I had people say to me, he needs to suffer more. I don't think he's really repentant. I said, how do you know? Have you talked to him? No, but I don't think he has. And so they just left him to try to figure it out for himself. So sad. You have options. If a person is disciplined and they're unrepentant, at least they know they're being disciplined. You've treated them the way that the scripture says. That's a clear thing. He's under church discipline. But a person that's not under discipline because they've repented and they've acknowledged their sin, then they need to be restored immediately. You say immediately? Yes, immediately. Because how long does it take you to be restored to the Lord after you've sinned and acknowledged it? You're restored immediately. We're going to talk about rebuilding, which is another matter. But restoration should take place immediately. But if you're not under discipline and you're not restored, but you're broken and repentant, then where does that leave you? That's the worst place to be. It's called limbo. You're in no man's land. You're not under discipline. You're not relationally restored to the body. You can be restored to the Lord. But where are you? And there are many, many believers that way. And I've asked, are they under church discipline? No. Are they restored to the body? No. What's the problem? Where are they? Well, you know, we don't want to show cheap grace to them. We're not sure that they've suffered enough. And uh, we, we just leave them alone. And that is so sad. Here's a verse. It's in uh, Galatians 6.1. The clearest verse I know, and you've got to take Matthew 18, verses 15 through 17, couple that with Galatians 6, 1. And if you put those two together, you've got a real roadmap on how to restore someone. Let's go through Galatians 6, 1. Anyone is caught in a sin. You that are spiritual, restore such a one Look in yourself, lest you also be tempted. Let's break it down, go through it phrase by phrase. If someone is caught in a sin, and that word caught is an interesting word. It means caught in the act of sin. Maybe they are just caught up in sin. Uh, it doesn't matter. Either way, they're in sin. But you, you become aware. It says if someone is caught in a sin, their guilt is confirmed beyond any doubt what happens. It says, you who are spiritual, go to them. The point is only spiritual people can restore fallen people. So who are the spiritual ones? Should be the leadership of the church. It's not always the leaders of the church. 
How do you know if someone is spiritual? Well, you want to see the fruit of the Spirit in their life. You know they walk with the Lord. But spiritual people, people that are walking in humility, that manifest the fruit of the Spirit, they're the ones to go. Let me pause because I've seen uh, people know somebody's caught in sin, then a group was formed to go to that person. But that group was a group of people who are not spiritual, who don't have the best interests of that person in, in mind. They're self-righteous people. There are people that just want to go and condemn that person. And I have another friend that a committee was formed to hold him accountable. Not spiritual people going to him to restore him, but people that went to him to hold him accountable after he was broken. And they did more damage than good. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. So someone's caught in sin, one of the first things you want to do in a, in a church body is form a group of spiritual people. Only spiritual people who are spiritually mature, walking with the Lord, can restore fallen people. They go to him. And they said, go to him to restore him. They should restore him. That's the goal, not to condemn him, not to hold him accountable, not to dredge up all of his past sins, but to restore him to the body. We're assuming he's restored to the Lord because he's broken and repentant. Now we want to restore him relationally and functionally with the church body. And so they go to him with that goal in mind. And the scripture, Galatians 6, 1 and 2 says, restore him gently. It's to be carried out without harshness or severity. And they need to know the person that's being restored, he needs above all else people that are loving and kind and gentle. He's been beaten up by Satan, by his own sins, by, the, uh, by other people. Now he needs some people who gently, they don't condone his sin, but they go to him without harshness or severity. And, and the scripture also says, but watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. So there's no room for pride. There's no room for self-righteous attitude in the process. It's a humbling task and go with great watchfulness. I've had people come to me in both ways. They come to me and you know that they're coming with that attitude of getting in your face and beating you up. And right away, you just resist that. I've had other people coming, come, say, I don't care what you've done. I know you've dealt with it. I know God has forgiven you. I'm here to help. Help you get back on track. Help you get back in the game. Help you get back with your family. Help you get back to usefulness. We love you. We care about you. We're here for you. And that just opens up that repentant person. It, it does. It makes them want to just be be a man of God, a woman of God again. But if people come with an arrogant attitude, you go the other way. The rest of the verse says, so if you think you're standing firm, be careful you don't fall. Spiritual people are aware of their own susceptibility. They say to themselves, there but for the grace of God go I. I'm not better than you are. I'm capable of the same sin. And so I'm coming with humility. I'm coming in the spirit. I'm coming because I love you and care about you. And I want to see you again, a useful vessel for God and for his glory and for the good of his body. And I'll do whatever I can to help you. That is effective restoration. And I have seen it work a few times, but usually, I, sadly, I have to say, I've not seen that attitude to a broken, repentant, fallen person. I've seen many times either neglect or harsh discipline that just excommunicates them and lets them go their own way and do their own thing. Now, do not misunderstand me. 
I believe firmly that a person that has sinned, whatever that sin is, once they own it, turn to the Lord, acknowledge that sin, they can be immediately restored to fellowship with God. They are restored. They don't have to go through penance. They don't have to go through a long program. They don't have to go through a long probation period. They are restored to the Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's done. It's right before God again. And he can be right with people. But what needs to happen, and in this lecture, this coming lecture, we'll talk about rebuilding. There has to be a rebuilding. But I, I make a distinction because I don't think it's made, between restoration and rebuilding. And I want people to see that a person can be restored and should be restored to the body instantly. But there should also be help for him, to, him or her to rebuild their life. And in the next lecture, we're going to talk about a rebuilding team.